Israel's foreign ministry said Monday the country has formally notified the United Nations it will not cooperate with the U.N. Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, once new Israeli legislation goes into effect early next year. Israeli government spokesman David Menser, in a video statement Monday, announced that Israel had notified the U.N. General Assembly the nation has terminated its cooperation with the agency. The state of Israel will continue to cooperate with humanitarian organizations, but not with organizations that promote terrorism against us. Israel has long been critical of UNRWA and has accused some of its staff of taking part in the October 7, 2023 attack on Israel, anticipating the decision. In a statement last week, World Health Organization Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus said Israel's decision puts lives at risk. This ban will not make Israel safer. It will only deepen the suffering of the people of Gaza and increase the risk of disease outbreaks. With one day until the U.S. election, both Democrat Vice President Kamala Harris and Republican former President Donald Trump are making their final pitches to voters. Associated Press correspondent Julie Walker reports. Democrat Kamala Harris made four stops in Michigan Sunday, using the opportunity to address the significant Arab American population vowing to end the war in Gaza. We need to end the war and we need to get the hostages out. And as president of the United States, I will do everything in my power to achieve that end. Republican Donald Trump hit three swing states Sunday in Pennsylvania. He disparaged the election and continued to deny the results of 2020, telling supporters he shouldn't have left the White House. About 77 million Americans voted early, along with Vice President Harris, who says she mailed hers in. Former President Trump says he'll vote on Election Day in Florida. I'm Julie Walker. This is VOA News. Germany's foreign minister made a previously unannounced visit to Ukraine Monday at a crucial time for the war-torn nation. AP correspondent Karen Chamas reports. Germany's top diplomat has arrived in the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, on an unannounced visit. The trip appears to be a show of European support for Ukraine. It comes on the eve of a U.S. presidential election that could bring far-reaching changes in Washington's policy towards Russia's all-out invasion of its neighbour. Germany is Ukraine's second biggest weapons supplier after the U.S., and Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock vowed that Berlin's backing would remain steadfast. The war is at a critical moment for Ukraine with the Russian army making creeping gains on the battlefield and another hard winter ahead. I'm Karen Chamas. Spanish rescue teams said they've not found any bodies so far as they've searched in an underground parking lot Monday following the catastrophic floods that hit the country's east last week. In the face of rising discontent over the government's handling of the disaster, the defense ministry said it's deploying 7,500 troops to help tackle the aftermath. Reuters correspondent Diane Till reports. The official death toll from Spain's worst flash floods in modern history edged higher to 217 on Sunday. Almost all of them were in the Valencia region, with dozens just in the suburb of Pai Porta. That's where residents vented their anger at the Spanish king and queen, as well as prime minister, who visited the stricken area on Sunday. Some chanted murderers and hurled mud as they accused the authorities of sending late flood warnings. They also say emergency services responded too slowly after disaster hit. Some of the protesters were also seen wearing symbols of far-right groups that often stage protests against the leftist government. Defense Minister Margarita Robles on Monday told State on Radio RNE that 2,500 more troops are being sent to the country's flood-hit east. That was Reuters correspondent Diane Tu reporting. Speaking Monday at Interpol's General Assembly in the Scottish city of Glasgow, Britain's Prime Minister Keir Starmer announced about $97 million of extra funding to fight the smuggling of people. People smugglers bringing migrants to Britain in small boats across the English Channel from France are a key focus for Starmer's Labour government. Starmer called on the international community to view people smuggling as a serious security issue. People smuggling should be viewed as a global security threat similar to to terrorism. We've got to combine resources, share intelligence and tactics, and tackle the problem upstream, working together to shut down the smuggling routes. Britain's Interior Ministry reported 5,417 people made the crossing in October, the highest monthly figure in two years.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.